Let's take a look at some massage and anatomy. We're focusing on the hamstrings here. So the hamstrings, the three big muscles that occupy the posterior upper leg, from the hip down to the knee. They cross the hip and the knee, so they act on both. We've got two in the medial portion, and these two we call the semis. So we've got semimembranosis and semitendinosis. Semis means a part of, or one half, and really it's better to think about these two muscles as an individual part of one whole, being the two semi-muscles. So what do I mean there? Well, we've got semimembranosis. This is the membrane part of that muscle. If you see it, you actually see the muscle in itself. It's more like a flat kind of tendon. And then you've got semitendinosis, which is more like the sort of ropier part of the tendon. We've got the two of those together next to each other, and they do essentially form one muscle. They've got the same origin, although they have got slightly different insertions down below the knee. They're on the back of the leg. They're gonna bring the hip backwards into extension. They're gonna bring the knee into flexion, and that's what they do. Occasionally, they act on this proximal end, or the origin, so they pull that pelvis into a posterior tilt. Onto the lateral side, we've got biceps femoris. That means two heads of the leg. Biceps, we've got a long head and a short head, and it's not quite as bulky as the semis, and you'll see that pattern repeated throughout human anatomy, i.e. tibia being two thirds of the bone of the lower leg, fibula being one third, similar thing up here. And we're getting these muscles a little bit looser, a little bit warm, hydrated, more pliable, with some effleurage. And you can see I've gone in with a decent amount of pressure straight away because we've actually got a lot of soft tissue in between my hand and the couch. And you'll see that I'm finishing off the strokes laterally because we don't want to be going this way for obvious reasons. And we're making sure that we maintain contact on the way back. Underneath these muscles, we need to remember that we've got the adductor group, particularly adductor magnus, which is often called the fourth hamstring. So that's under there. We can influence it, but we do need to get through the hamstrings first. So usually we can increase that pressure a bit quicker than with other muscle groups because it is so deep. And you'll see what I'm doing is reinforcing a thumb. I'm starting with a thumb not reinforced at the back of the knee. We don't want to put too much pressure in there. As we start to get into the bulk of the muscle belly, now we can put the pressure in, reinforcing that thumb, coming all the way up to the origin, which is the ischial tuberosity. That's your sit bone. And you sit down and you feel the bony part of your bum, that's it. This is where all three hamstrings come from one common tendon. And we're moving gradually laterally with every stroke, just for a bit of differentiation. We might then come back medially, but just so we're not doing the same thing over and over and over again. Possibly a bit more depth required. So let's now go with knuckles. I'll use the cam and spindle technique. So we're gonna go knuckles with that part. It's not just the knuckles, but actually it's the flat part of the first couple of joints of the finger. We're putting that the hand on there with relaxed fingers. Try and make sure these joints are in good alignment to preserve yourself, th the therapist, and then the thumb's gonna go in that gap there. Push with the thumb and with the body weight, and you'll see the erythema that we leave on the leg. Those red lines are an indication that we've been able to go a bit deeper, and we force those localized superficial capillaries to refill. Pressure okay? Good. Don't forget to check in with the patient because they might be stoic and hard and they don't want to admit that they're in pain. But we don't want that because they're going to tense up and make our work less effective and make it the job harder for us. Speaking of making it harder for us, that's already gone to a point where I think we're ready for more depth. But before we do that, let's just give her a break with some petrosage. Petrosage is that kneading. We're lifting up the tissues, putting them down collecting them with the other hand, and repeat. So we end up with that kneading action, and try not to just work through the same part of the muscle fibers. So let's go to the top, let's go to the bottom, let's go just behind the knee, and then we can go with some push-pull as well, which is that ringing, essentially, which is a squeeze, a lift, and then a reset. Squeeze, lift, reset. Try and cover as much of the muscle belly as you can. Two ways of increasing depth from where we were then. We can use the elbow, which we'll do, I'll show you how to do that safely. We can also flex the knee. So flexing the knee shortens the hamstring group from the distal end. So we flex the knee and we've got less tension in that muscle. One way of getting into those fibers a little bit easier so that they hold less tension. The other way is to go in with the elbow. So make sure that we've got some wax on the elbow first. And gently is key because we can put a lot of force down here without particularly trying. 
nice and relaxed. Keep your hand and wrist relaxed. And go nice and slow. And you let me know if that gets too painful. The slower we go, the more readily they should accept that pressure. And I'm just slowly working my way laterally. And then back medially. Try to avoid working particularly medial or lateral. There are other positions that we can put the client in to work more effectively there. Break up those deep strokes with some lighter effleurage. So the majority of the rest of the treatment that we do is going to focus on a repetition of those different things. There's no set order that we're going to work in. We just need to make sure that we're facilitating relaxation. And to do that, we need to actually give them a break once in a while, which is why we'll break things up with some relaxy, relaxy, gentle, superficial massage. Last thing that I'll show you then is going to be a bit of an advanced technique, but why not? This is an STR. So we're going to put some pressure down into the tissues themselves. I'm going to pull away from the insertion and then I'll slowly lower the leg down. That is getting in the way, so let's move it. Press it down, up towards the origin, and then reset. So we can do it in a static way. I prefer to do it with a bit of motion. So we'll apply that lock, and then push those tissues up and away. And you can imagine there, hopefully, you can actually see to some degree, the tension that we're gonna have, and the stretch we'll have on the portion between my lock and the insertion of the muscle. And then all the previous strokes apply. And we'll finish off with some superficial, slightly faster paced massage, just to flush everything through up to the lymph nodes in the groin. So that's a bit of anatomy and massage for the hamstrings group.